Hello, my name is Gloria Roberts. Today, we are looking at the topic, feeding habits. Yes, feeding habits. Objectives of lesson. As the lesson progresses, the learners should be able to, one, mention the types of feeding habits. Two, state at least three organisms each that exhibits the type of feeding habits mentioned. Three, name the different types of sucking mouth parts in insects. Four, define parasitic feeding and five, define saprophytic feeding. Holozoic organisms feed on solid food that are either in large or tiny sizes. Those that feed on larger foods such as man, ducks, hydra, birds, lizards and so on, they make use of claws, their teeth, tentacles and beak to catch or pick their food. Others that feed on tiny food or microscopic food, they have certain mechanisms or habits for feeding. So there are different feeding habits, namely 1. Filter feeding habits. The filter feeders are mainly aquatic animals which use save life structures to collect and strain or filter their food or prey found in the water bodies where they live. Here, water rich in planting and nectar is drawn into the organisms. Planting and microscopic plants such as diatom, netting and microscopic animals such as copepoids, crustaceans and the rest. Now as the food moves over the sieve like structure, the food is filtered from the water into their mouth and then the water is taken out of their body as excess water as waste. Examples of filter feeders we have whales, flamingos, mosquito larvae, ducks, prawns, oysters, we have copepoids, mussels and so on. So here we have images of these filter feeders. The first one is the baleen whale. Baleen are bony-like structures arranged in their mouth, tiny, fine-like, bony-like structures. With this structure, they can filter the food from the water in order for them to feed. The second we have lamellae, which is found in dogs. It's connected or is located inside the edges of the beak or beak of these beds, and so used for filtering food. Honey plates line the beaks in flamingos, so flamingos they make use of honey plates for filtering their food. And mosquito larva, they use what we call um, feeding br brushes to filter their food. These feeding brushes are actually connected to their mouth, so they can easily draw in water to themselves with them and they filter the food for feeding. Number two type of feeding habit, we have fluid feeders. So the second type is fluid feeding habit. And so fluid feeders are animals which feed on fluid materials such as nectar and soft sap in plants and blood tissues in animals. They are grouped into two categories. So we have A, the suckers. These are organisms with mouth parts for taking or sucking in their host fluid. In another way, they feed on liquid food. Mosquitoes, butterflies, bugs, ticks, housefly, testifly, whitefly, and so on are all suckers. Examples we have butterfly image here. Butterfly is feeding on the nectar, which is a fluid sugary substance inside a flower. And here, the second image we have mosquito sucking its host blood, probably human being. So here we have summary of the different sucking mouth parts. The first one is called piercing and sucking mouth parts. This is common to mosquitoes, testifly, aphids, and the rest. They have the ability to pierce the body of their host, then suck the fluid out of the host. The second one is siphoning mouth parts, common to butterfly, moths, wasps, and the rest. What they do is that they use their proboscis to enter the pollen tube or enter the body of the flower, then get their food. The last one is the spongy mouth part, common to housefly. So housefly can feed on liquid food and even solid food. All they need to do is digest, release some enzymes that can digest the solid food, then they can suck it in. If it is liquid, that is easier for them. Okay, the second type of fluid feeders are called the wallowers. These are organisms which wallow in their food. In another word, they swim inside their food. A common example is tapeworm. Tapeworm lives within the digested food in its host intestine and absorbs the food directly through its entire body surface. Very stressless life. It has no alimentary canal, so no mouth, no stomach, no intestine, no anus, nothing. All it does is swim in the food, in the digested food of its host, and then the food just goes straight into its body. Stress, like I, like I said, 
stressless but harmful very dangerous tape one wallowing in digestive food of its host is what you can see here number three type of feeding habit saprophytic feeding habit in this feeding habit the organism feeds on decaying organic matters of plants and animals meaning when plants and animals when they die certain organisms can feed on their decaying organic matters these organisms are called saprophytes they are capable of secreting digestive enzymes through their hyphal wall on dead organic matters to bring about their extracellular digestion. So the kind of digestion in saprophytes is extracellular digestion. Soluble glucose and amino acids are absorbed through the same hypha or hyphal wall. Examples of saprophytes you have bread mold, you have mushroom, mucor, and certain other bacteria. So here we have images of saprophytes. The first one shows the image of rhizopods. The second is showing bread mold. We can have black bread mold, green, even red mold. All right. And the third one we have mushrooms. Mushrooms are edible, while some are quite quite poisonous. So one needs to be very careful when picking mushroom for feeding. Some are very poisonous. So number four, parasitic feeding habits. Parasitic feeding habit is common to parasites of plants and animals. Parasites are able to get their nutrients from other organisms which are called their host. Now they can feed on their host blood or other body tissue. So parasitic feeding is quite harmful because the host is deprived of its nutrients and the parasite gains in this process. Now parasitic plants such as mistletoe, doda, which weed plant derive food from their host by the use of structure called osteria. Singular, yes, osterium. Okay, now these osteria are needle-like projection that can pierce the body of a host plant in order for them to get to the phloem and get the food from the phloem. Now parasitic animals are either endoparasitic, which means they are found inside their host. Common examples we have roundworm, trypanosomes, hookworm, liver fluke, and so on. Or they can be ectoparasitic, that means they are found outside the body of their host, such as we have in ticks, lice, fleas, and leech. So here we have images showing parasitic plants and parasitic animals. Now the first one is mistletoe plant coiled around a host plant. Now if you study it where you see those needle-like projections, those are the osteria. Those osteria are used to pierce the body of the green plant, which is their host. Then they can then suck the fluid, such as cell sap or so, from the plants. And then here we have lice in hair, getting its food from its host. Now the food is not the hairs. The food is actually that they can pierce the scalp of their host or the body of their host, then suck blood out of the host. Then the last one, we have mosquito deriving its food from host animals probably human being. Mosquitoes are very dangerous insects. They are also vectors of malaria. So one needs to control them in the environment. Wow, we've come to the end of the classes, the students' activities. We have 10 questions here for you to answer. They are all question based on the topic. If you are not able to answer any, don't worry. Go back to the video, watch the video, download it, study it the more and i believe as you do so over and over you become a next part in the topic feeding habits so go through it all right we now have the students activities answers it's time for you to mark start marking mm, mm, mm. time is ticking all right i believe you are true now and you have 100 percent that is our goal for you to be able to answer all the question and get everything right even more questions that you come across on your own please subscribe to my video if you have not click on the notification bell view my videos they are quite interesting and educative and of course put down your comment if you want any video made for you maybe there is a topic giving you challenge please drop a comment on that all right at this time i want to thank you for joining me once again in this class thanks for learning today